Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's discuss the International Space Station. Where is it headed, what's happening to it, and what exactly is going to happen in approximately three years from now. So first of all, let's start right here. This beautiful shot taken on December of 2000 of the three first astronauts on board the International Space Station. The American Bill Shepard and the Russian Yuri Kidzenko and Sergei Krikalov. And since then, for approximately 21 years now, the station has always had someone living there, making the station one of the most remarkable and one of the most mind-blowing projects that humanity has ever been able to accomplish. And although allegedly this is the most expensive single item ever produced anywhere on the planet, costing nearly $200 billion, or one Jeff Bezos, it's important to understand that this is not just a technological, a scientific and engineering marvel. This station was created out of the politics of the Cold War and also represents a huge diplomatic achievement. This was a combination of several major powers combining their effort to create something absolutely incredible. Something that we'll probably never be able to achieve again. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. But the question now is, what's actually going to happen to the station after 2024? Is this going to be the end of the project? And here, well, we have actually a lot of conflicting information. On the one hand, in the United States, we know that both Obama and Trump administrations have actually tried to get rid of the station. Obama tried to turn this over to the private entities and Trump actually tried to shut it down completely by 2025, removing all of the funding. And their reasoning is quite understandable. It's an extremely expensive project. Every single year it costs up to about $4 billion of NASA's funding. All of this funding could be spent on other programs. We could probably launch 10 different telescopes in one year if we had all of this money. Or more realistically, all of this money could be used on various manned missions to the moon. And this is exactly what the government is sort of trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out what to do with the station in approximately 3-4 to four years because, well, the money needs to be used for something else. On the other side of the equation we have Roscosmos. Sometime last year they suggested, or actually more like threatened, to withdraw from the program by 2024 as well. And because this is an international space station, without Russian presence and without Russian maintenance and extra money, US would probably not be able to do all of this alone. The station was designed to be dependent on both countries, so if one decides to withdraw, the other one will probably have to dispose of the station as well. And here's actually what the entire station sort of looks like. And today it's basically a combination of different US parts, different Japanese parts, European parts, Canadian parts, and of course Russian parts as well. And all of them have to work together in order for the station to operate and in order for the station to function normally. On top of this, Russia very recently announced that they're actually getting rid of this complex known as Pierce. It's this part right here that's used as a docking module. And this part is going to be re-entering the planet in approximately a few weeks from when I'm making this video. And so all of these signs kind of do suggest that maybe this is the end of the ISS. But then it doesn't make sense because then Russia announced something entirely different. They announced that they're going to be launching an extremely advanced scientific module known as Nauka, which in Russian means science, that's going to be docking in that same spot where Pierce used to be. And since this module has been in planning for over two decades and has actually experienced not one, not two, but six different launch attempts and they've been trying to launch this module since early 2000s, this definitely sends a mixed signal. It sounds like the Russians are not going anywhere. It sounds like they're actually quite excited to continue scientific work. And this is a huge module. It's approximately 24 tons in mass. And it's the biggest module the Russians have ever sent to the International Space Station. But because of various issues with budget, with planning, with various technical glitches or rocket glitches, ever since the early 2000s it really looked like this module will never get launched and the Russians will just leave. Yet at the same time, only a few days ago from when I'm making this video, this comes out, telling us that it's already on the rocket and it's ready to go. So in other words, it's definitely going to be launched. Which for Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, is a huge deal. It's going to cost them a lot of money, but it's also going to provide a tremendous scientific opportunity. And so at least from the Russian side of things, things are really complicated. Now some people think that maybe Russia is just posturing, maybe they're just pretending to want to leave, but in reality I'm going to be using this as an opportunity to possibly ask for money from NASA. But at this point nobody really knows. 
On the other hand, if we look at the American side of things, and here I actually wanted to use this budgeting graph that was created by the Planetary Society, even though there was actually very, very little funding for NASA during the Obama and Trump administrations, the recent administration seems to have okayed pretty much everything NASA was asking for. As a matter of fact, they got way, way more money than they were even sort of asking for. Which is both weird, unusual, and somewhat difficult to understand, but exciting. On top of this, NASA obviously signed up for a long-term deal with SpaceX that will provide a lot of privately funded manned space launches to the International Space Station. So if all of this was just symbolic just to show that we can do it, it was a very strange symbolic gesture. But it still doesn't change the fact that, for now at least, NASA definitely wants to focus on the lunar exploration. The lunar gateway that you see right here is definitely going to be the priority both in scientific terms, in research terms, and of course in funding for the next decade or so. Which once again leaves the ISS in a somewhat peculiar position. On the one hand, the money seems to be coming and there seems to be some interest in the International Space Station. But on the other hand, there's also a kind of a push to basically give this to someone else to deal with. Some sort of a private organization, maybe some sort of a commercial entity, or someone else. For example, there were several ideas on maybe turning the International Space Station into some sort of a flying hotel or some sort of a private lab. But I think most researchers and most scientists would agree that this would be an extremely expensive project and nobody would really be interested in it. So for example, turning the ISS into a private hotel would mean that the private organization has to provide approximately $1.2 billion per year in order to sustain the station in orbit. And that's the minimum value. That's approximately a thousand times more than the most luxurious hotel on the planet. It means that a single stay here would cost approximately a million dollars and you would also have to have several thousand tourists per year in order to sustain this and to make it at least somewhat profitable. And the same goes if we were to turn this into some sort of an orbiting laboratory. There's unfortunately no demand and no money in making this work or in making this happen. And since commercial entities depend on supply and demand, companies like SpaceX were able to fit in by providing supply of rockets for the demand that was there from the government. But there's absolutely no demand right now for an orbiting lab. Nobody really needs any zero-g research unless of course it's a very specific field. But none of those fields have billions of dollars per year to spend on maintaining such a station. On top of this, several private industries have already proposed their own stations. For example, here's a picture from the Axiom Space that's trying to create their own station that's going to be used for various private reasons. And then we have the other company known as Bigelow Aerospace that's been trying to build something known as Space Station Alpha that you see right here. And so both of these private entities already have their own thing going. They don't really want to buy or maintain the International Space Station. And then we have our last issue, the issue of expiration date. The thing is, all of the modules on the International Space Station are already past the due date. They were originally designed to operate for 15 years. And the vast majority is already too old. And even though they still could be safely operated for at least a few more years, most of the parts here are already too old and beyond repair. Which is one of the reasons Russians were even talking about withdrawing from the program. Some of the parts here are just a little bit too old and unfortunately not very safe anymore. Which is pretty much exactly what the Russian astronauts were saying a few months ago about the conditions on the space station. So a lot of them don't even feel safe living there anymore. And so once again, I kind of find myself asking the same question. What exactly is going to happen to the station in approximately three years? There's definitely a lot of conflicting information and conflicting directions everyone is taking. On the one hand, the Russians are trying to get away from it, but then they're also sending a completely new module. The module that technically is expected to operate for at least 15 more years. On the one hand, NASA is trying to divert funding to the lunar projects and to possibly give the International Space Station to some commercial entity, Yet at the same time, they signed up for a pretty expensive deal with SpaceX that's going to be sending both astronauts and resources to the International Space Station for quite a few years to come. And so I sort of feel like this astronaut right here. I have no idea what's going on. I don't think I actually understand where all of this is headed. But what's clear though is that the International Space Station is definitely going to go down in history as the most incredible, most successful global project ever created. A project that allowed various cultures to put aside their differences and to create something together. Something that doesn't really happen very much. Which is also why something like this will unfortunately 
probably never happen again. And the reason is pretty simple. On the one hand, we have the commercialization of space. Private companies are taken over. But on the other hand, we have extreme nationalism that has been happening more and more in pretty much most of the countries in the world. Nationalism is creating a lot of problems for a lot of collaboration and cooperation across different regions and across different countries. And so it's extremely unlikely that such a massive collaborative project will actually happen again for at least a few decades, possibly even longer. Which also unfortunately leaves me with a somewhat sour conclusion. Chances are that in 2024, maybe 2025, this is going to be the conclusion for the ISS. It's going to re-enter and crash into the Pacific Ocean. Although in this case, I really hope I'm wrong. I really hope the solution is found and I hope that the funding comes from somewhere. But anyway, for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention. We'll talk more about the ISS and some of the future missions in some of the future videos. But for now, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.